Okay, so we finally, after, what was it, three strikes, you're out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we finally get to have our conversation for the listeners and viewers. Sandy and I have tried to connect a few times and, you know, just for, for you know, reasons like technology, it hasn't really worked out. So I'm really excited that we finally get to have this conversation. We had such a good chat last time as well. So um, this should be really easy for us. And I'd like to introduce Sandy Davies. The reason that she kind of caught my attention was there was something in an email about 50 bottles in 50 weeks. I was going to say 50 bottles in 50 days, but that wouldn't ever look good on you. <laughs> <laughs> so 50 <laughs> bottles in 50 weeks. We both enjoyed our celebrating our 50th birthdays and, um, and you enjoyed yours more than I did with 50 bottles of um, champagne. But I absolutely love that and I want to ching ching. Um, that was such a cool initiative. And you're also the creator of a vaginal balm that helps you get your groove back. But we will put that on the shelf, that balm for now. And we'll talk about like, where did you come to in this place? Like, where did, you, like, how did you lose your groove, Sandy? So <laughs> <laughs> let's chat. Oh, I love your laugh, by the way. It's <laughs> Oh, thanks heaps, Tracy. And thanks for having me on. Third time lucky, I reckon. Um, and actually probably fourth time because we almost crossed paths and would have probably become friends decades ago because two weeks before I was headed for the University of Otago. Um, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. I ended up with a last minute transfer by the board that was overseeing my fellowship and I ended up at the University of New South Wales. Oh, wow. And then you didn't leave Australia? <laughs> you stay? Yeah. This, well, it was my mother's worst nightmare, I think. Her big thing was, I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for this fellowship. I love your wings. Don't meet anyone. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Actually, if we just dial back to Otago, so just... Um, some of the friends that I made, I think we would have been friends. So some of the friends Absolutely. I made in Otago <clears throat> are some of my dearest friends today. And even the location that I've moved to in New Zealand, um, one of my old flatmates, housemates, is um, a, a girlfriend I catch up with every week. And one of the girls from um, my class is also one of the girls I catch up with every week. So I do have those long-term friendships, and I feel pretty blessed about that. So who knows, Sandy, we've got like another four decades ahead of us and you're just across the ditch. As soon as yeah. the bubble reopens, we could, you know, have those our next 50 bottles lined up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so you went to Australia. <clears throat> yeah, so I landed in Australia, um, met my soulmate, and back in the States, I actually had a bumper sticker that said, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> um, and my feminist boots were absolutely determined that I was not letting a man get in the way of my path. So I stomped back to the States with my independent boots on, but left my heart here and and eventually realized that, you know, there is a bit of, well, not eventually realized, realized very young in my 20s that there is a balance to life and we have to be open to our heart as well as the journey of our mind. And so glad I chose my heart. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's only, there's only one way to do that, isn't it? And the heart needs to speak and you've got to just switch on sometimes. I think that's one of the things that we learn a lot faster as we get older is, you know, your heart and your gut are really honest with you. And uh, if you can tune in, then pretty good things are going to happen. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And you always, I think, have to listen to that intuition and instinct because she doesn't really lead us astray. Um, and especially, I think, with perimenopause, too, because as I started to enter perimenopause, I didn't really get the support I needed from my GP. And I knew <laughs> something was off. Yeah. Welcome to the chorus. Hey. Well, yeah, I hear I'm hearing it like every single day. And I don't know whether it's because you and I have gone down the rabbit hole. It probably is. But I just hear this like, I think every couple of hours, like mm. I can't I can't get the support I need from my GP. And so if you're saying it in Australia and I'm saying it in New Zealand, then, you know, there definitely has, there's, there's a shift that needs, <clears throat> excuse me, that needs to happen that's similar to what's happening in the UK, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're on fire in the UK. Um, Davina and that documentary, Louise Newsom, um, Jane that wrote me in my menopausal vagina. The UK's on fire and addressing it. And women are driving that 
path of recognition where I think maybe maybe in the medical field, because there is so little preparation for doctors for menopause, they still have the same perception that I guess we do, that it's something that happens when you're older. And we still think of older as like grandmothers in their stockings and house coats. And we're that perimenopause and menopausal generation. And we're outraged because our symptoms are happening when we're too young. We're just in our stride. What do you mean this is menopause? I'm in my 40s. Like, you know, when we start to hit it, we're, we're outraged. And there's no way we think it could possibly be anything to do with menopause because that's way, way down the track. That's for old ladies, yeah. Exactly. I mean, such a good point, Sandy. And it, oh, it's so, so good to talk to you about this because I have mentioned that to a few colleagues and friends that have said, oh, I don't know what's happening to me. You know, I'm waking up in the night and I'm sweating when I shouldn't be. And I'm like, and then I just go, oh, perimenopause. And they go, no. No. <laughs> and I'm like, four, I'm like four or five old, five years older than these people I'm having a conversation with. And I, and so I, I feel like I qualify. <clears throat> and I say, yeah, it's perimenopause. They're like, no, 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 I'm not old enough. And I'm like, well, I've had those same symptoms at the same age, so take it or leave it, but I recommend that you investigate. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's it. We didn't want to embrace it or have to deal with it because we thought we were too young. And then when it happens to the next generation and we try to say it, they're equally outraged. No way, I'm not there yet. <laughs> but so with- you went to Australia and um, you married the, the your soulmate, which is great. I love those stories. Mm-hmm. And then. You, do, did you have any children or what did you do in between? Like you, you've got this really cool um, business line um, that we're going to speak of uh, towards the back end of the, the podcast interview. But what were you doing in between? Yeah, well, the business line is so um, accidental, I suppose, because we worked 12 to 14 hours a day for nearly 20 years in our business on Fraser Island down in Southeast Queensland, um, World Heritage listed Fraser Island. And we had this amazing adventure business, raised our kids through this business. Um, and then our girls both developed these beautiful wings and, and flew and were in their stride. So we um, passed our business on to a beautiful couple who had come back to Australia after many years with the International Red Cross. And we packed our bags and moved north. Everyone thought we'd sort of lost the plot because we moved to the remote tropics of far north Queensland. But we moved up here for a lifestyle change because we knew there had to be more to life than that crazy, you know, 12 to 14 hours, seven days a week that we'd been doing. So we moved up here to semi-retire. But then having problems with perimenopause and creating (laughs) a bomb kind of threw that whole semi-retirement thing out the window a little bit. (laughs) Hey, but that's another really cool thing about hitting your stride in perimenopause. Like, well, you, you have all these symptoms, right, that make you incredibly uncomfortable on the daily, physically. And then you've got the mental symptoms about um, doubting yourself and losing confidence and some, some level of anxiety. But underneath it all is this bubbling of creativity of I feel like there's another part of me to give. My days are not yet done. And because we've also had really cool women go ahead of us and role model that you can be or do anything at this age they don't talk about menopause though but no um, <laughs> we did, there is that there is those role models out there that have said hey look 50s is, is awesome you can create your own business you can that idea that you've always wanted to do is there for you and you don't have to work every hour under the you know under the sun kind of thing you can work your own hours and stuff and I think that has kind of resonated with quite a few of us Absolutely. We want, we want to follow something that we're deeply passionate about. And for both of us, it's about women's wellness, right? Absolutely. And, and I love the way you have become such a beautiful advocate and voice for all of us about women's wellness, because it is such a, a hard thing to navigate through perimenopause. And we don't associate perimenopause with what's happening to us in our late 40s. And you've just bounced into the into the forum as this beautiful voice just full of energy and full of oh, I demand to find answers and we deserve to sort this out I love it you're just absolutely fearless and wonderful and a beautiful joy to have across oh. the world for women <laughs> oh thank you that's so sweet I think what it is is I have found my voice I and I don't know about you but and I probably speak for a lot of women in this when I'm I'm kind of open um 
there is the inside voice, right? And then there's the outside voice. And for a long time, I have had to be the inside voice. And that is just obviously to, to support a team that's growing or learning. But there is those stupid inside comments, and I won't mention any of them because, no, it's not a nice thing to do. But, um, but it, I think it's this moment where I'm like, well, I don't think the inside voice serves me any longer. Because if I'm demanding to, to get answers to the questions that I have around what's happening to my body and why shouldn't I feel like a lot better, I mean, I do not count 51 as old. Like, I feel generally really fabulous, but I have these shitty little symptoms that, yeah, they're still there, and I feel like I could do better. And that's all it is. And then if I'm not saying anything, then what about everyone else? Like, is everyone else okay? Like, are you guys okay? <laughs> that's kind of what I want to know. Yeah. 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 yeah and, and the resounding answer across the platform is absolutely we are not, even if it's only a few symptoms. But even you know, like you had the majority of all of the symptoms. Um, yeah. We all do, whether we're talking about them or not. And And I found actually for me, I think, Dryness was probably my most profound symptom and I wasn't finding any dialogue about it or any yeah. conversation about it. Um, and you, Sorry, now we, oh, I really want to deep dive into yeah. your particular symptom. So can you elaborate a little bit more? When you say dryness, where are you? what are you talking about dryness? Because I know that this is mm. definitely a symptom I've experienced, but I'm, I'm like dry, dry nails, dry hair, dry skin. And I know... Yes. Yeah. Mm, as okay. well. Like it and yeah. and quite often if you're if experiencing that change in your hair texture or your skin, it will also usually show up as um vulval vaginal dryness as well. Right. Okay. And I love that you call your podcast sexy aging because for me, I guess my journey of dryness is that vaginal dryness is about so much more than sex. And yes. being and feeling sexy is about so much more than just sex because the most pronounced symptom that you get with vaginal dryness is that intercourse can be a bit more painful. It can be difficult. It can cause micro tears or you can have spotting after sex. You change how you have sex and you have less sex and for less duration. But even beyond that, for me, when I was still having my period in perimenopause and the thing that led me to my GP was, was having these huge, heavy periods and I discover now that it's quite common in perimenopause and they're called flooding periods and oh, I was having sounds these amazing <laughs> yeah I know joy 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 yeah. um, at, at least they were quicker but they were so so heavy and you had to use so many tampons that then your body became very dry and it would become painful towards the end of that heavy period to even use tampons so you'd only be using pads and it would be difficult at work and then in addition to that, once you develop that dryness, you start to get micro tears from toilet paper. If you haven't already had to make that sensitive skin transition to special laundry powders and cotton undies and no more. I used to love yeah. sexy um, matching satin sets. No, I'm just 100% cotton girl now and I yeah, hate it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I know what you're saying, actually. Yeah, there's, there's parts of it that... That, you know, just like the lingerie wearing matching lingerie, that just makes you feel good. It's not like ne ne not that anybody would necessarily see it, right? But there's sort mm -hmm. of a level of I feel good when I wear this, 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 wear my hair like this, and it even comes down to the underwear. So when you have mm -hmm. to strip that out as another thing that you can't do, I mean, it's sort of like stripping away a part of you that that sort of values who you are as a woman in the world. So. Yeah, carry on. Yeah, awesome. it will, and, and ex exactly, and it, it it strips away. And then for me too, like when I, but I I just had no luck at the GP. Multiple, multiple, multiple trips, and in the end, well, yes, that's just perimenopause. I can offer you counseling. Well, counseling isn't going to fix my dry vagina. It's not going to fix <laughs> brain fog. It's not going to fix those things. And I ended up at the pharmacist with um, he prescribed a multi day pessary which didn't work. I had an allergic reaction and oh my God. And it was, ugh. but, and I just discovered then as I started to deep dive into what was available, most things are um, a huge application with an applicator and a huge volume of liquid or these dissolving pessaries, which once again, if you've already had to switch to cotton to try to improve your, your um, body function and reaction to dryness, 
you feel less sexy, you don't feel like you have as much of a groove. And then if you use some of those traditional things, you start oozing it back out. So you have to wear a yeah. panty liner, which if you have sensitive skin and allergies, it just starts a whole nother cycle. But regardless of whether you do or not, you just kind of think, oh, and it, you're already suffering from a low libido, just from your hormones doing that yep. roller coaster thing. And then if you have that all the time, that makes you feel not your best self, not at your sexiest, you don't even want to think about the lowering libido issues because you're already feeling a little bit, ugh. And we don't yeah. ever want to feel, ugh. Yeah, it's just frustrating the amount of time that you have to put attention to it, right? Uh, <laughs> you never put any attention to it for the, you know, the 45 years before that. And now it's like it's taking up all your energy and attention just to stay comfortable, uh, which, is, which is really like, I'm just having this conversation with you, Sandy, and there are so many women out there that are having to deal with vaginal dryness, mm. um, and there is no conversation. There's absolutely right. no conversation, and and once again, so often the conversation only leads back to sexual intimacy, and yeah, no, you I'm can, talking about daily living. <laughs> yeah, daily living, like yeah. you can maybe yeah. not be able to sit through a movie, or yeah. you start to to have irritation from your, your labial skin rubbing together in the middle of a day when you're trying to get a presentation ready or hit a deadline or motivate your team. And it just, yeah. it's, it really just takes your groove away. And I'm such a big proponent on always finding your groove, finding your joy. And I know we all deal with plenty of rubbish and plenty of crap and we go through hard and low times and heartbreaking times, but there's, an internal spark that will bring back joy and hope. And when we can have that as the more predominant experience, it just, I don't know, it's the icing on the cake. And we should always be experiencing the icing on the cake in our third age or second spring. Yeah. I think this is the, the, the I, I would actually say the <laughs> icing on the cake. When we get to this age and we know what we know about how to deal with our symptoms and we start to have these loving and open conversations with other like-minded women it really does make you go hey this is really awesome this is a really cool stage of life but like I still have this thing that really bugs me and I'd really like to deal with that mm. and so just being able to reach out to you and get some insight into how did you deal with your key symptom that led you on to an amazing business and you've actually got a nomination for an Australian Mumpreneur Award yes <laughs> yeah I, I'm so thrilled and so excited about that. And and yeah. I love being a part of those Oz Mumpreneur Awards because yeah. our girls are adults now. So it's kind of nice to have an old mum acknowledged as well as all the young mums that are, you know, finding their groove with business ventures as well. So yeah. it's been quite exciting to be up for that best product innovation. And I like the acknowledgement of best product innovation because the journey that took me to Happy Paws Yes. involved hundreds of dollars of purchasing products from the US, from Sweden, from Europe, from the UK, trying to find something. Um, and I ended up really disappointed in my journey trying to find a solution for dryness because even pharmacists, everyone just wants to recommend um, lubricant like KY Jelly. KY Jelly hasn't changed since it was invented in 1904. And it's made for a particular type of friction that has nothing to do with dryness. We want something that's going to like penetrate our skin and, and soothe and build up those inner layers of skin. Um, but I tried hemp products from Arizona. I tried bee-based products. I tried everything under the sun and at great expense when you try to get something shipped to Australia yeah. because there was nothing here. And just yeah. nothing, it was either sticky or it was smelly or it wasn't suited for sensitive skin or it was back to that huge vial of application, which led me to then creating Happy Paws, which only just takes a couple of mil. And I just love having something that you just, you know, it's there, you feel it straight away, but it feels natural like you did in your 20s. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. really excited about, you know, that your journey because you have found something that works for you and mm. you've had um, great success I've seen testimonies around women that are using happy pores so for those who aren't aware happy pores is a vaginal cream yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's yeah. a balm for vulval vaginal um, moisturizing and right. it's one of those things that it it's great at night but it's also good in the day almost it's just like a routine like you would with your face and 
And if you have taken that HRT path and are using estrogen supplements, it can work hand in hand. So it's not oh, anti HRT. It's, yeah. it's friendly for whatever your, like we all have a different journey. We all have a different approach and it's whatever gels with you. Um, and it's still quite hard, I should just say, to get a doctor to prescribe HRT over here. Not only is it cost oh. prohibitive in Australia, but yeah. your doctor just, yeah, you have to fight for it. And it's so yeah. frustrating. I'm if fighting women have, for it right now. Yeah, and yeah. you, like, who's done more research than you? You should just yeah. be able to walk in and say, boom, done. Well, I did, but it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> So anybody that knows me, and I think people are kind of getting to know me through the podcast, knows that I've done my research, I've got the checklists, and I know what I'm talking about because I've spoken to the the lead, one of the lead doctors in HRT in the UK who's on episode 18, um, and she broke it down for me, said this is, this is the conversation, this is how you have the conversation with your GP, this is what you're asking for. And so it was kind of a masterclass in client to doctor HRT mm. prescription recommendation. Uh, but how are we, yeah, and how are we having to be given instructions like that and have to have a script to follow? It just, yeah. it's beyond outraging. And I'm so thankful for so many of those UK um, gynecologists that are telling the rest of us around the world how to do that. But yeah. then how lucky are we in New Zealand and Australia that, our forthright voices are encouraged so we can continue to fight that battle and be forthright with our doctors when there are still so many cultures where that kind of forthright conversation is not going to come forth from no. women who feels her voice is suppressed. Yeah, no, that's that's so true. And I think that's also part of our journey, Sandy, is like, you know, between us and our Mino army that we're developing, that we're going to help those women in other places yeah, that can't <laughs> that can't voice what's happening to them or don't know what's happening to them. They don't have the education. Nobody has the conversation. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm writing a blog post right now called "My Journey to Get HRT." So I'm taking it. I mean, I could do the easy route, Sandy, which is mm -hmm. I have specialists on my roller decks. I do, uh, and I can do a tele call and just ask for it and say, "Here's my 27 symptoms. Don't need a blood test." They're like, "Yep, 100%. Here you go. I'll mm -hmm. send it to you." But I felt that that didn't serve. Um, woman in New Zealand in the same situation as me who goes to their normal GP mm. and says, look, I'm experiencing these things and have the GP say, you are menopause, pre perimenopausal and you are maybe a good candidate for HRT. Can I tell you about it? Or here are some other recommendations. Or well, here mm. are all the recommendations. Like I'm not having that level of conversation and I'm not saying that the medical system here in New Zealand or Australia isn't great it is it's free mm. yes and we're so lucky in so many ways <laughs> well you know I've come from 20 years in Asia you pay for everything so, mm. but I mean it's very 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 good medical system as well but you yeah. just basically pay for it yeah. um, but here it's free but yeah I've got a really great GP she's lovely she's 51 and I said well how are you feeling <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever asked me that. And I said, mm. well, I'm 51, you're 51, I'm perimenopausal, here's my 27 symptoms. How are you feeling? I mean, have mm. you considered taking HRT as well? Do you think we should look into this together? I mean, I'm probably, yeah, I'm pretty sure she's waiting for me to call back because I'm still waiting. So, mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I find it so um, heartbreaking because I'm such a big mental health advocate and there's such a benefit for things like counseling and antidepressants. But I find it really heartbreaking that so many GPs, especially in Australia, will prescribe antidepressants before they will even have the HRT conversation with you. And we need to have antidepressants available when we need them for a mental health issue. But we need to also listen to women's voices. And yeah. we know what we want and what we need. Yeah. No, it's so true. I, I have another really dear friend, also was a guest on the podcast, really forthright, confident woman. After sort of learning about perimenopause and stuff, I think she probably has known for a while. Um, also did a visit to the doctor in the US and they prescribed heavy migraine tablets and um, antidepressants and she just went, no, mm. <laughs> that's not what I need. Um, and I, and then went to get another GP. Mm. So she said, I need a new GP. <laughs> uh, but we so often yeah. trust that um, that voice of knowledge and that professional voice, and we trust the medical field. 
So it can be so harmful if we don't have that capacity to find no. Yeah. Like I love that yeah. you know she said no because we we always want to just take what a specialist says and not yeah. have to challenge it or think about it. Yeah. I mean, and her and I know there's no way that she had any symptoms for depression. Mm. So that really set off a red light. Yeah. Yes. Hey, Sandy, um, so because we're focusing on our session on um, vaginal dryness, do you want to just tell us a little bit more about um, your happy balm? I love that. I love that yeah. name as well. It's like when I think about it, I feel happy. I think about putting it down there and I think, oh, would that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make me feel happy? Yeah. So tell me, tell us about it. Because I want to support you and obviously, you know, if, if there are women out there and this is one of the big symptoms for them and they're just like beside themselves. I can't imagine feeling that way going through my day. It's not one of the symptoms for me, but I definitely wanted to highlight whatever is mm -hmm. happening in this space. Um, yeah. So tell us about it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm so thankful for you that that's not one of your of your list. You've got a big yeah. enough list anyway. But yeah. yeah, it's just so it can be so just almost soul destroying that you know you feel like you've got it and you feel like it's going on and then you'll get up from from something and then your skin because it's dry will maybe stick together or then it causes more micro tears or just hurts or itches yeah. and it's yeah. I don't know and whatever happy paws menopause I tried to turn menopause into happy paws but it's so much more than just menopause should be a happy time for us to soar in our in our era you should be happy down there and the big thing I discovered with creating Happy Paws, it just, it didn't start out as something to share with other women. It just started out as I was so desperate, I had to find a solution. And my chemistry teacher from high school would be so proud. He was such a feminist and would just bang on on his desk about we girls needed to be chemical engineers and we needed to be scientists and the world needed us. And he was heartbroken when I didn't go to uni and do chemical engineering and I did social justice and social policy instead. <laughs> and he, he liked that I was wanting to fight a good fight, but he wanted me to fight the science fight. So I love that in later life, he would just be so proud and his fist banging on the desk um, had a result. But yeah, so I created Happy Paws for myself and it was just such a home run and it was so amazing and it just instantly made everything feel good. And it's that thing of, oh my God, yes, if we feel good down there, we feel good everywhere. It just yeah. gives us back such a stride in our step and just gives us our groove. And I didn't really realize how hard I was struggling trying to overcome that dryness more than any, more than brain fog or anything else um, until I just knocked it out of the park. Um, and then my daughter eventually got a little bit cranky with me and said, Mom, this is helping you so much. You need to help other people as well. Because I'd started sharing it with a few people just regionally. And I even had, had a lady that is in her 80s that hadn't swum for 20 years uh, because yeah. of the chlorine against any micro tears or anything. And then it would just lead to a terrible cycle that she would have to fight with urinary tract infections and all the rest. And she's back in the pool. That's so cool. So, so, good. It, so good to hear things hmm. like that, isn't it? Yeah. And it was the things like that, I guess, that that was then the dive board to make me spring and take the leap and take the risk and take the investment and make it available across the platform and across the globe for women. Because, yeah, we shouldn't stop doing the things we love. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Sandy, I'm going to um, post the details on how someone might be able to access Happy Pours and obviously get in touch with you. You are such a fabulous, joyous soul. I am so glad we've connected and um, thank you for being on the podcast. Oh, absolutely. Thanks so, 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 so much.